And it, it's quite pertinent to the Wildcat announcement, Trav. 1.1 <laughs> lithium percent over. Right, uh, g'day, money miners. We're back in the flesh, delivering some mining news. Ricky Arda. It's good to be back, man. It is good. It is good to be back. We had iMark last week, probably reviewing our participation in conferences because, geez, it's a lot of work to set everything back up in the office, mate. But we had a great time. Met a lot of great people. Met a lot of the great money miners out there. Yeah, and uh, look, it was, it was good to uh, good to engage. With There's everyone. no shortage of um, yeah, like money miners in Sydney. I know that much. They're um. They, they're, they're, they're a bloody different crowd to the Perth crowd, but they are like bloody interesting. They all um, have very unique perspectives. I appreciated it. I just um, just want to stay in Perth for a while. <laughs> I think so, mate. Thanks to thanks to uh, I, Mark, Carly Stevens, who got us over there and uh, give us the booth. We really appreciate it. Had a great time. Now, Trav, today, Money Miners, you missed out on news. We're bringing it to you today, and we're bloody excited to be back in the desk, mate. We've got Wildcat. 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 <laughs> Got a bit of a nickname for them coming up. Let's see if that takes off. Uh, mate, Azua, God, aren't they always in the news? And yeah. we're going to go and uh, gonna expand on a bit of stuff that we didn't cover as much last week, but, geez, it's all happening for Azua. Also, Absolutely. develop popping up within a, I guess you'd say, a little small lithium play, but is there a bigger play at picture in the Northern Territory. This is very exciting. And we'll also go across the uh, the journey of STK Trap, Strickland medals. We covered Got to throw in some gold at the end, mate. Yeah, we covered covered them when they made a little a lot of cash, had a lot of expiration money, and they've kept going up. So, mate, let's do a bit of uh, general administration here, we got mate. some announcements. The live event, December 7th at the Golden West Brewery on yep. Thursday. No yeah. point... Uh, advertising it really because no. she has sold out in less than a day. Less than a day, two hundred and bloody thirty tickets or something gone, and they weren't even free. <laughs> I know. We should have bloody god. I know. Lucky you got in this one because the price is going to be doubled next time. <laughs> so maybe maybe the um the number of people coming can be can be double as well, Maddie. We'll have to have to find a. A big, a big venue next yeah, time because the demand's there. But, mate, cannot like, wait. We're doing a live show. It's uh, awesome. Mate, it's going to be an absolute great evening. We're going to be – and we're going to be auctioning off some special Hooteroo hats. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's going to be a bunch going on there. Like meeting 249 other money miners should be a selling point enough because that's a wicked thing to do. Well, 247, you know me and Jane do. <laughs> and Ali and your, and your missus is coming too. Oh, so. uh, yeah. Mum will come too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, mate. So yeah. uh, looking forward to seeing everyone there that's bought tickets. Mate, Hooteroo Hats, mm. they are going live for sale today. Now, yes. I reckon it- by the time you are listening to this money miners, they will be available. Is that thumbs up mean they're up? GC. Yeah. We've got a thumbs They're up. They're available Malik. right now. We should talk about why these hats are the special ones though, Maddie. There's something pretty special about this lot of hats. It's even more special than the one I'm wearing now. It is. Look uh-huh. at the side. Look at the side of mine. No, no, no gold bar stamp on those ones, mate. Turn your noggin around, Trap. Other way. Oh, dickhead. This side. <laughs> <laughs> so, they are embroidered. Yeah. G C double O one through to G C zero nine nine. The first 100, oh, no, I think it's 99 because yeah. I think you, no, it was, you, you yeah. pinched one at the start and we I didn't did. get it. Yeah, <laughs> we so didn't get it embroidered. The first 99 hats ever distributed Hooteroo to hats. the money miners. And, and look, there's even going to be, when oh, you yeah. get it, you get a, a little, little personalised thank you card signed by <laughs> me and Trav and JD, if that means yeah. anything to anyone. It, one day that signature will be worth uh, $3. And then <laughs> uh, so they're all available except two. I think yeah. we'll just be fully We've reserved open. A couple. Yeah. We're reserved a couple. So at the live event, we're going to be auctioning off GC001 mm-hmm. and GC007. James Bond. James Bond. Yeah, which would be – it's pretty cool. I think we're going to intentionally keep the supply of the Hooteroo hats pretty low and limited. We believe that scarce things are should, should hold a premium value. So these are – so pretty much get paid more if they're more scarcer. <laughs> These are 99 Hooteroo hats. I'm not going to give any guidance on when any more will ever come to market, if they will at all. Yeah. You should buy a hat, get one. Go um, to the go to the show notes links, <laughs> the the Shopify links in there. It's on our, on our socials. Get in quick because mate, they're going to go hot. And there's different there's different prices for each uh, number. Top ten. 
if you want a specific number, your birthday, get in quick. <laughs> Mate, also, oh, we, we hit the global, a lot of admin here. Mate, we were on, we mentioned it the other week, we had the great experience of being on the Joe Lowry Global Lithium podcast, two-part series. That was wicked. Pretty much so. Anyone, people were asking about the full backstory because we can't con JD into doing his own one. Um, <laughs> so that was a good uh yeah, we had a great yarn to Jay. So head over and have a listen to it. Yeah. We're promoting the competition. Yeah, we'll Big chuck- Jay's not put competition. He's a legend. Links will be in the show notes. We'll also put a link to the Hooteroo hats. Um, yeah, but part one and part two of that were, um, yeah, I thought I thought it was it was a fun, in, it was a really fun interview that we did with Joe. I hope it uh, comes across okay if you listen to it. You'll get a di- different perspective. We talk a bit differently and a bit more openly about the business that we're trying to build on Joe's podcast. Um, and if that's of interest to you, go go check him out. Right, and, oh, mate, finally, we better get on to the great people out there in the mining industry that keep money of mine alive. Our new sponsor from the other week, MMTS McMahon Mining Title Services. Now, when you think of managing titles and all that sort of stuff, like, I would put that in the too hard basket, (laughs) Trav. Like, that's like... Shit, this is a pain in the ass. Totally. That's why what businesses like MMTS rock up to take all that crap off your hands and do it in a very sophisticated and professional way. Massive. It's it's like such an, a fundamentally important part, or like a service to provide all of the companies in our industry. And if you do it wrong, mate, it's a catastrophic outcome. Mate, I have heard yarns of people forgetting just to re- renew their title. Really? Yep. It has happened. Yeah, non-compliance. And that's like the old carton policy doesn't really cut the mustard if you lose your mining lease. You open yourself up to bloody being planted, all that sort of stuff. Exactly. Hand it over to MMTS. You've got Eva leading, spearheading the organisation as the MD. You've also got Helen and Shannon who we met the other week. So they've been validated as GCs in our life after interacting with them. Mate, everyday mining title compliance – Support with land access, title approvals, mate. They're working with all big companies, large to small, across yeah. WA, it's Queensland. Like companies. It's massive. Yeah. A massive. WA, Queensland, South Australia, New South Wales, Northern Territory. Um, I love the way. Haven't got Victoria. Victoria's too hard. I love but the way they'd they probably could. be able to do it if they could. They could, yeah. Mate, they could, I think they could even do it in uh, in Fiji if yeah. they wanted to, but, but you know, don't. Don't tell me about your Fijian exploration. Right? Well, and that's – it's funny you say that, Trav, because if you're thinking of a logical merger, <laughs> if they could go to start doing Fiji, New Zealand, mate, they could head over to Alaska. They could probably merge with any time exploration <laughs> services. You can't pitch M&A deals amongst our sponsors because oh, then, then, then is, we get paid half as much. Mate, there is mining supply <laughs> M&A potential. Um, yeah, geez, I didn't think of that. That's good. Mate, any time. The OG sponsors who are yeah. everywhere – Probably going to Argentina and Chile soon, we determined. Seamus Murphy, the team at any time. Mate, tell you what, top supplier of field assistants and geologists, experts in early phase mm-hmm, exploration, mm-hmm. mate. They do so it the all. the top supplier of field assistants and geos. What, that's, pre- that's a pretty wicked stat. That's, that's I did not know that. That's what it says here and I believe that it. is true. Because, yeah, Seamus doesn't lie. Victoria if, doesn't lie. If it is on the computer, it is true. And, mate, exploration, soil sampling, mapping – Ground truthing. They will find what is true in the ground. We we actually need a we need if they can supply geos. I think we need to call them up because we need a bloody geo to talk handy, about half actually. of the companies Shame today. Us, give us a buzz, mate, because we'd <laughs> like a bit of um. Anyway, yeah. mate, uh, stay tuned for a big announcement actually coming out of the exploration uh, anytime exploration business headquarters. Big stuff coming soon. I'm excited. Hint, hint. Maybe expanding. Are they? Oh, maybe. Very, very exciting. I'm excited about that. Word on the decline. They might be expanding, and if they do, you will hear it here first. So, <laughs> mate, if you need Geo's bloody Polaris's to get around, give Seamus and Victoria Murphy a call at any time, mate. I could just do a full episode of sponsorship. I love it. <laughs> I love it, mate. News of the day. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, we... I've got to get the song. Actually... Wildcat. <laughs> do it. Wildcat, also known as Stick the to cra- podcasting, Matty. Not also sick. known as the crazy feline. The crazy feline. I like it. I like it. They're in the headlines uh, today, Matty. Uh, and I know you're, you're you're a fan of playing darts, mate. When when Jade and I were around your place for 
a barbecue a few months ago. You had you had the kids out with um, the dartboard. You're teaching them darts, and you when you are like determined, you don't stop something until nah. you achieve it. And you were trying so hard for getting three triple. 20s in a row. And it, it's quite pertinent to the Wildcat announcement, Trav. 1.1 <laughs> lithium percent over. That guy <laughs> is my absolute <laughs> idol. The World Series of Darts, the bloody bloke that smokes two packs of Winnie Reds a day. Does he and as you hear it, 180. 180 metres at 1.1 percent at the Lee of Pegmatite. <laughs> Have a look at it. She looks like she's uh, bloody... As they say, pinching and swelling. But yeah. tell you what, it's isn't the uh, wild? You look at the old wildcat share price. She is absolutely flying. Well over, well over a billion dollar company now, especially when fully diluted. Yep, yep. And um, I think we should have we should have called up Seamus and asked for a chair before we started talking about this one. But I'll give you my um, my perspective on it nonetheless. I did, I did note uh, George Ross at Argonaut. He's modelling that uh, wildcat now have an eighty one million ton resource at 0.9%. He's got a 100 million tonne exploration target on it. So yeah, so I'd, ass- I'd assume that it'd be without a cutoff grade applied. Uh, not sure. Not but sure. anyway. Not so. sure. A few things to talk about um, with Wildcat today, though, and that's it. Last week, Minres scooped up a 19.9% interest. They bought a line of stock from uh, the vendor GAM, which is owned by RCF. Immediately after that, the next morning, the stock fell off 16% because the market had kind of clued on by now that Minres owning um, a minority blocking stake is not necessarily a good thing um, if you're a lithium developer. But despite... More shelled. Yeah. And, and despite that, um, today's new see, sees them trading at all-time highs. So they've um, completely you know made up that loss in value with um, the positive uh, you know drill hit today and, 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 and some, some, some interest in the days prior. Um, so all-time high, they hit as high as $1 in early trade today, which would give them a fully diluted market cap of nearly $1.4 billion on a yeah, post-transaction a, basis. Yeah. When so um, I, think, I think it's a bit over a billion shares on issue then, yet it's about 30% on top of that, one point, of the ones in the in the money. Yeah, 1.37 billion shares for, on a fully diluted basis on a post-transaction basis. Yeah. Um, also, also today, though, Matty, is, is Wildcat's AGM. And um, the reason this is of interest, I'm pretty keen to see – like Minres now that they own 19.9%, they're, they're obviously a shareholder, so they get to vote in this AGM. How are they going to vote on some of the resolutions being proposed to shareholders? I'm curious to know if they're a friendly shareholder or a foe. And what do I mean by that? In the past, we talked about the um, the introduction fee options, the performance shares and the like that were tied to the acquisition of Tabba Tabba. There are some resolutions in this AGM that relate to the issue of some of that paper. And I'm just curious to see if Minres are, are going to be like friendly with um, you know, existing board members, or if they're gonna if they're gonna be a little bit, a little bit fierce. Um, so I'll be I'll be looking to see the percentage of acceptances in that in the resolutions that come through. So they they can obviously vote against those oppies that we talk about. Yeah, because then they haven't been issued yet. That's why there's. Uh, yeah, there's a couple that that required another approval because it'd been a, a larger period of time between the um between the announcement in May and, and, and the ultimate completion. So it just required another shareholder approval. Um, I think some of them are already through this. There's just a, a, a small, you know, so, some resolutions pertain to pertain to some of the, this script. Um, but, and I, and I think, you know, as I understand, even if Minres voted against, so I imagine there'd still be enough votes for that um, any any vote will ultimately pass on, on the issue of those um that script. But it'll, it'll give an indication of how they're going to play ball. Yeah, because when Minres came on, like you saw Wildcat post an announcement saying, we welcome a new shareholder. So there was an intention to appear friendly, but will Minres be friendly? That's mm. the real question I have. But now I'm looking at um, at Wildcat. They, they've only got $9 million bucks cash at the end of the quarter, and I see a lot of brokers are now picking up the pen and writing about them. Um, so – you know, at some point they're gonna they're Such gonna top up. <laughs> um, and yeah, just be be curious to see. It's 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 a big company now. They're getting a lot of attention. It's um, um a lot of drilling. Yeah, a lot, lot of drilling. Lot of, you chew, you chew nine drilling. million bucks up pretty quick. Yeah, I think I think um, I think they'll uh, yeah. It'll it'll just be curious to see how it all plays out from now. It's you know it's it's going to be one of the most talked about stocks at the moment. We're we're talking about it again. You've given it. Two nicknames now, Maddie. So, uh, Crazy feline. <laughs> Wildcat. Uh, yeah. So we're just going to keep following it. Love it. Love it, mate. Now, heading up up in the same district, same chemical, 
Azure, AZS. Now, remember, everyone, SQM's offer was for 352 then yep. 350 if it, the scheme didn't get past, mate. Trading at three bucks seventy three, they'll trade mm-hmm. it at four bucks. Trade as high as four oh one. Four oh one. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It's pretty uh as we we've seen the Gina's involvement, we did talk about that. Now I've seen Min Res come on as a substantial shareholder at twelve point uh twelve point three percent yeah. in November. Yeah. That's the interesting thing to me, Maddie, because it really does kind of pose the question what, why is Min Res buying up its own stake here, given that Gina had enough to effectively block the scheme. I think I think before you get into it, Trav, you put out, you simplified it great in last week's, well, oh, fuck, two weeks probably, two weeks episode ago about the three scenarios that could play out with Gina's role. So she could either accept a minority interest in an SQM-controlled vehicle. Mm-hmm. They could then, they could, de- she could then, Put an offer in. She could, yeah, she could chuck in an, a, her own offer at a yep. at a higher price, one at which SQM could fold into, or, or she could ultimately um, SQM could delist. Uh, that that was more um, if if in, in related to option one, but the other one is like she could actually end up accepting the SQM offer oh. herself. Um, and the thing to to look at with Gina's buying is she she didn't buy a share over three bucks fifty, and she also interestingly hadn't gone past nineteen percent, which to me indicates she's keeping the, she was keeping the door open from just an, op, you know, Ben, Ben Bailey mentioned the word optionality in our chat with him. And, um, she hasn't gone past 19%, which indicates she's keeping that optionality, um, to potentially either cooperate with SQM or partner with SQM. I'm not quite sure, but the optionality was, was retained there. So why is Minres buying up? I have two potential theories on this and bear with me, right? The first theory Christina, which we're, we're memeing. It's, that's, it's a new word, Christina. It's happening. Just bloody roll it's with it. It's Christina. It's Christina. So yeah. the, the first theory is Christina isn't completely aligned with each other. They're still working out the terms of their marriage. And just in case Gina gets cosy with SQM instead of Minrez or in a, in a manner that which Minrez isn't comfortable with, Chris is buying his own blocking stake in Azua right now yep. to, to have a, a seat at that party. Second theory, Chris Gina is a line. The marriage is solid, Maddie, and they're trying to gobble up enough of the register to prevent SQM from ever getting 50.1% itself. So why does this matter? If SQM gets 50.1%, they effectively have control of Azure. The company is controlled by the board, which can be controlled by SQM's vote. Gina's there with so 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 Gina's there with 18.5%. Imagine Minrez mop up, you know, about the same. 18.5% too, right? There's 37%. Recall Creasy has 13.2% yep. and didn't provide a voting support statement for the transaction. Add Creasy's stake and you get greater than 50% between the three of those you know, hypothetical parties. Assume those three parties were all on the same page, right? Then despite the clever dual transaction structure, SQM can't get to 50.1%. And they, they've like successfully prevented SQM from getting control potentially if, if that panned out. Wow, that's very interesting. What, are, what about, Trav, if they – sorry to break your role on yeah. there, but what if with that transaction, if, you know, as if anyone went over 19.9 19%, it went into a off-market takeover bit away from a scheme. Yeah. What if the, the uh, super co of Gina and Chris happened before the scheme? That'd then trigger the trigger the takeover, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's the that's an actually another, another in, interesting consideration because if if uh, Chris and Gina jointly submitted a, a takeover offer in a com, on a combined basis, um, there's the, a rule in takeover law where you can't uh, lob a takeover offer at a price lower than what you have bought shares at. Now Minres has bought shares all the way up to four bucks, so the combined entity could not lob a takeover bid lower than four bucks. It'd have to be. Ah, oh, is that right? Correct. Now, Gina only bought shares up to 350. So uh, that's that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. Is it, right? is it pro rated 
Like if you no, when you combine it's, them, it's, it's, it's it'll be from the one. Bucks, yeah, right. So yeah. it's a bit of a menage de trois, you'd say, between possibly <laughs> Who knows? Chris Chris Gina and yeah. uh Mark Creasy. Yeah. It's not a menage de trois because Chris Gina had been they're effectively the same person in that theory. <laughs> so Ali Jo so he's pissing herself over there. She's loving how that got included. <laughs> she's she's made menage de trois a, a popular phrase on so, my mind. So do you reckon uh option two has some uh has some good weighting to it? I don't, Trav. I don't know. It would it would it would mean that that Christina are co- either cooperating or have a view that they can cooperate with Creasy as well, right? So like, like, do we think that that's likely? I, I don't know. Um, or 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 Christina aren't as wedded as we thought, and Chris is is trying to prevent Gina from cooperating with SQM. That'd be left that, field if that's true. I don't, be, wouldn't it? But like yeah. for all the speculation and stuff and 100%. articles that have been out there, a hundred percent. Imagine if that come out. Jeez, that'd be totally. Good. That'd be good for the views. And they do have to be, you know, careful if they are aligned that they they're they're not deemed associates for the for the purpose of a change of control transaction. I mean, um, I'm sure they've done their their own homework on on that front. I, I, I'm keen to, you know, just while we're talking about this whole strategy in the chess game that's unfolding with these um these corporates really you know standing their ground i am keen maddie to have a further discussion on min Reza's strategy of hoarding the rock as as we've talked about it hoarding the rock and blowing it up <laughs> and selling it i've been i've been <laughs> reflecting right like um and i want to talk about like the lithium market dynamics so um We've all heard about the massive funding for battery plants and downstream refining facilities. And we all know that like that funding has disproportionately gone into those facilities and it's, it, it's yet to go into like the mining part, right? So like, you know, I think what, what, what Chris Allison's view of the world, what I'm inferring his view of the world is, is that he's seeing, you know, you're going to have all of these refining, like all of this downstream capacity come online, but they're all going to be short of the supply, supply yeah. and in in that kind of world where um, the the raw material supply is is like super high demand because otherwise these downstream facilities might not be profitable. They need to send stuff through it, right? In that sort of world, it makes sense that you want to not only hoard all the rock, but you absolutely want to prevent the owners of those downstream facilities from getting their hands on the rock because the hungrier and more starved that they are, the higher you can sell your rock to them for. So I think it's it's a, it's probably not just hoarding the rock. It's it's also kind of preventing <laughs> preventing the downstream from, you know, getting getting supply and like, exactly at this what, point in time. Exactly what they're doing with presenting preventing Albemarle to take Cath yep. Town and pre- try and it looks like they're Albemarle, doing, trying SQM, to prevent both SQM that theme, yeah. taking Azure. And yeah. look even look how early Minres are getting in on Wildcat as well. So obviously yeah. prevent something similar happening there. It's, so, it's a lot of. It's and a look lot how of early they got into the whole goldfields <laughs> lithium area as well. Remember when we um we 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 t- oh wow Ali just put up a buddy oh, we've just, a sign we've saying the first hat it. sold. Oh, oh my gosh! Whoa. Wow, that is cool. What wow. number was it, JC? Number two sold. Oh, that's the well, well done to whoever the lucky buyer of GC 2 Oh, yeah, that was the first hat. That oh. is bloody exciting. Absolutely, We're on officially it. in the merch industry. Oh, I'm not sure it's the industry I want to be in. Yeah, but. Really, maybe it's <laughs> bloody hard work. But anyway, yeah, God, well, we told, geez, I'm bloody off track now. But no, that's Jesus all right, Christ, mate. That's exciting. We're on to um, I think we should. To speaking of Minres and, and that whole strategy, mate. Um, we can we finished that. Yeah, we, we did. We finished that. We yeah, finished no, it. Yeah. It's all they're pretty much they're getting every rock and they're pissing off. SQM and Albemarle. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. And you can buddy sell your rock at a, at the highest possible price if um if the people with downstream are as starved as possible. That's exactly. kind of my thought. They don't even care on the, the percentage of the beers. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mate, speaking of min res, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how good uh how interesting's this one? Develop. Very. Where JD's chucking half his uh, fictional coin as per the <laughs> Joe, Joe, Lithium, uh, Joe Lowry Lithium podcast. Mate, he talks that of- was, Just, just, just disclosure, it wasn't uh, actually half his coin under strict strict circumstances. Strict circumstances, yeah. yeah. And yeah. look, mate, great, great yarn. And I felt like Anthony Kavanagh interview was great. Mm. But I felt like the, a lot of the interview- he was just repeating things I've said. He, he must about, have been. I think he. Yeah. I, th- I think he looks up to me. I think so. I'm not, yeah. Anthony. I'm not um, downplaying your knowledge of the industry, but <laughs> all your views on Bill Beeman and Chris Ellison and the alignment and the Minres takeover of development come directly from money. It's pretty much 
Yeah. I'm the foundation of all that. Yeah. So. Yeah. He, well, he, uh, Anthony, I think. Um, Anthony, we need to have a beer, mate. He's, We'd get along. <laughs> He, uh, that was, he, his comment on this sort of stuff was actually really, really interesting. And um, I think he wrote a contrarian note a couple of years ago on Minres and it all sort of panned out um, largely in the way that, that he'd kind of written. So he's got an affinity to the to the company um, and he speaks about develop sort of fitting into that in, in that chat with JD. So people should check that out. Um, but this one, mate, there's a connection to, to develop and, and Minres because because. We, when you listen to Bill Beeman speak in, in recent history, he does talk a lot about having some affection for the business that Chris Allison has built. He sort of speaks of it in really high regard. Well, he considers he, – he was openly saying that Develop was pretty much the underground min res. Trying to like, be. That's trying to be, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what they were emulating yeah. off. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and so if if Bill's emulating min res, I think he's come to the party, mate, because – Minrez's latest strategy is um, minority stakes in, in lithium early stage. Well, develops tipped in to a capital raising for a company called Lithium Plus Minerals, ticker LPM. They're, they've raised eight million bucks and you see on the, the announcement that, uh, you know, Cornerstone, well, there's a contribution um, and a commitment from Bill Beeman's develop is our one of the I love it how they the just don't. Yeah. <laughs> any bloody, yeah. any announcement like that, yeah. you've got to hand it to every company. It's never develop is the major <laughs> shareholder. It's Bill, Be- Bill Beeman's <laughs> develop. The power <laughs> you've of brand. got to get the big fella's name in there. Yeah, which is, this is interesting. I mean, they don't say how much develop tipped in of that 8 million. Just said they're cornerstone, did I? I don't I, oh, no, I actually don't think I said cornerstone. They just said um, tipped in. But, but like, let's have a think of what, the angle could be for Bill tipping in here. Lithium plus minerals. That's, that's Bill Spodger Beeman. You're Spod- referring Spodger Beeman. to, isn't Bill it? Spodger yeah, Beeman. Sorry, not Bill Beeman. Oh. Bill Spodger Beeman. Well, this is, mate, buddy, <laughs> an, an aptly named nickname because, like, after that nickname, he's, here we go, here we are, another lithium project that he's, there's interest in. So well done, mate. Another thing I've said about <laughs> Bill that's true and Chris. Go. You're anyway. a mind reader. Oh, a bit like that at zero. Takeover price, <laughs> doesn't it, Trav? Hey, it, you it's just this it's spiritual. I don't know what you think. I'm all over this finance shit yeah. these days. Yeah. yeah, mate. So, what's give us the bloody spiel, mate? What's going on? Where is it? So, lithium plus minerals, $60 million market cap, and some lithium tenure in the Northern Territory. It's adjacent to Core Lithium's project. They also say that they've got a maiden chalk resource expected to come out this quarter. So, no resource on the tenure just yet. Why, why is this? of interest well i think you know i think i think we're we're just trying to figure out what's the angle here for develop right and i can't look at the um drill hits of of um lithium minerals just yet until the maiden resource comes out and you're like look at this picture travis that's an underground mine but until it's vertical yeah until that what can we look at well it neighbors core lithium's um tenure and core lithium have obviously mining from Grants Pit, but they're trying to bring online this BP33. BP33 um, needs a bit of capital and they've started some uh, early works for underground mining there. Underground mining, the key word. It's like we said, Maddie. this is this is going to be um, underground mining of the lithium resource, Bill's expertise, underground mining. That's what he's building, develop around. So I'm kind of just, I'm curious to see if um, if the ultimate angle here, I know it's only like tipping in some undisclosed amount of money into a capital raise of an adjacent project, but is there a broader kind of consolidation play that um, that Mr. Beeman, Mr. Spodger Beeman could be thinking of? Mm-hmm. Don't know. Let's just watch this space. And yeah, it's interesting what you say about we put we put the was it who did we talked to about it. Uh, no, with uh, Dave Franklin mm. when we're talking about develop, he was he was uh, bullish on him yeah. and. You know, early on, Bill was talking about getting equity in projects for contract mining. And really? Thi- and things like that. That was, was that one of his, when he first like oh, got yeah. developed going. Yeah. Um, he was talking about, you know, had to grow the business. He's like, because he's got the, the capability, got the capital, got the got the following. Mm. He's having the ability to, you know, do contract mining for equity in projects and, and yeah. partner up that way. It was sort of a, an arrangement that not many organizations have have the ability to do yeah things like this are an example and yeah but look and you've got the relationship between chris and bill we've got mm. anthony also mentioned in his interview it could be a couple of he predicted within the next couple of weeks they'll announce a contract minor for mount marion mm. which you would assume that uh 
So you, you look at this involvement here with LPM, you've got MinRes involvement with potentially Mount Marion. Mm. Uh, Bill is getting very busy on the lithium front and you could see it uh, all catapulting very quickly um, with the lithium business. And I think he's had to – and he's had to act quickly because Woodlawn's sort of gone on ice for a bit because of the copper and zinc prices, zinc yeah. prices and he's got the ability why, – why would you start a mine if you don't have to? And lithium's running hot. So he's mm. – diverted his attention pretty pretty swiftly and it could see him take off like this. Reading uh, reading the tea leaves, Mr. S- Mr. Spodger Beeman. Is- yeah, yeah. Well, and, the, and look, and the the prophecy of uh, MinRes taking over Develop one day and merging them is whether it's logical to create this PR house and go, we go back to Anthony's comments, which pretty much come from me. Um, <laughs> who would Chris Ellison want to hand over his kingdom to? To, yeah. to take Minres into the next generation when he one day yeah. retires. I can't say him ever retire, and I no. reckon he'll be, I reckon he'll be in a wheelchair running running Minres. But founder led businesses want like minded founder led business people, and geez, Bill's definitely one of those few that you can count on one hand that you could pick from Australia that would do that job. So, yeah, interesting. I mean, but, but on the on the counter. Argument to that one is Bill talks about um, only wanting a was it a three to five billion dollar business? He doesn't want the big behemoth, doesn't want the the complexity. Well, maybe I'm assuming it's the the um the headaches that come with a big company. So yeah, he might ask him and he'll say no. Jeez, be oh jeez, be a tough man to say no to, uh, <laughs> wouldn't you? Would you say no to Chris Ellison, Trav? Uh, You'd be y- shaking. At if the he knees. said, Travis, uh, I'd love I'd love to meet you. I would say yes, Mr. Ellison. I would love to meet you too. There you go, <laughs> mate. STK Strickland on the radar, mate. Aren't they? Um, very little interesting though. They're, they're pretty much a, a gold exploration bank. Not long ago, after yep. selling their um, selling their Melrose deposit to Northern, Northern Star. Star up near Jundee, got yep. about bloody yeah. sixty million bucks in the that about yeah. sixty million bucks in the bank mm. after it, uh, and they've obviously kept hitting more gold at the Horsewell project. That seems to be proven up, mate. Having a prolific rise in the share price. Yeah, very interesting. Um, Super interesting concept. We, I mean, we did a show uh, where uh, yeah, this was kind of a feature of that show on August 24th, so two and a half months ago. Um, and at that point in time, they just finished the sale of that project. They, um, like, as a result of the sale of the project, they kept some ground. At the time, I sort of thought, why didn't they just like sell the company? Um, like, it's like an easier thing to do. But they they basically sold the project, got cash in, got some Northern Star shares, and kept some ground, which. I don't think the market ascribed any value to it at the time. Um, and I sort of thought what we did a show because we talked about it because we thought what an interesting vehicle. They've got cash um, and not much in terms of a project at a time when um, everyone else had a project and not much in the way of cash. And uh, and since then, mate, they've uh, managed to get themselves a project without doing a deal because they've had some success with the drill bit, um, which has been really interesting. So they've run from $0.04 cents to $0.18 cents since then, a market cap of, wait for it, $275 million now. Wow. And that's because – of these, uh, yeah, they've had discovery on the tenements they kept. So Horsewell, you mentioned, um, there's sort of two adjacent discoveries there that sort sort of line up. Um, I don't know if the valuation matches the value of what they have in the ground right now. So thir- 31 meters at 5.6 grams per ton from 72 meters, and then there's a 58 meters at 1.7 grams per ton from 17 meters. So a bit of the value would have to be getting ascribed to the fact that they know Northern Star will buy something off them because they've done it before. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big plus, right? And I think there's a couple of takeaways from watching the way that Strickland has 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 had this run. And I think one one of them is the fact that um, that even though undeveloped gold can't catch a bid right now, like you know, gold price is ripping. Undeveloped gold stocks are absolutely not moving, um, so they can't catch a bid. However, the market's still happy to reward drill bit success, which is sort of evidenced by Strickland here. The other, the other bit too um, is I think the market loves the fact that, you know, there's potential transaction optionality and that's proven in the previous one. But also you become more excited by the fact that the moment you have um, exploration success, you're not come raised because it was already really well funded from all that cash that they had in, mm. the, uh, in the bank from the sale of the previous one. So you're not worried in the back of your head as a shareholder, oh, they're just going to buddy do or raise at a 15% discount and um, – 
I'll, I'll wait until then because yeah, that's not the case. But Base, anyway. Yeah, look, it is, isn't it unbelievable to see how successful an exploration company can be with 60 million bucks in the bank? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good on them. Uh, right. we'll, keep, we'll keep watching it. Good um, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my, what that a bloody – that's probably the most positive episode we've done in a while. Everything was positive. <laughs> hey, who, who said we're all about negativity at Money and Vine? Bloody <laughs> unreal. And tell you what, you want to talk about positivity. <laughs> Hooteroo hats are on sale and we've just sold one. And, mate, as we've spoken, we've just five we've sold five. Five mate, are gone. get in quick. And by the time wow. you're listening to this, they're probably sold out. So sorry <laughs> sorry if they are. But we will reprint some when they all sell No, out. we won't. No, we keep it, mate. We're keeping them bloody... I didn't say straight away. No, no, we're bloody we're, – the, the supply is going to be constrained. <laughs> there, there is going to be an, a side – a scalping a market. market. That's yeah, great. As, if as it, Revere If said. it sends up the price of the, the OG 100, brilliant. I'm all for it. Let's keep the price – the supply low just like uh, – Lithium spodger, man. They're like a baggy green. <laughs> they are like a baggy green. Right, oh, mate. Awesome, awesome, Trav. Uh, mate, thanks to – what else in admin at the start? That was it, nothing. Just the hooter outs are on sale. Mate, Wicked. get in quick. Mate, thanks to all the sponsors. We had MMTS and Anytime Exploration at the top of the show. Also got our new and great friends at Future Proof Consulting, KCA Site Services. And then Brooks Airways. Brooks Airways. Smith I've got to power seg- technology. segment them into bloody new and old to remember them all. I should write them down. They're Brooks. All, all gurus, mate. All, go- all gurus and GCs <laughs> in the industry. Yeah. And uh, the foundation ones at Terra Capital, K Drill, JP Search, and Smack Power and Technology. Legends. We've definitely said them all, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we absolutely have. Well done, guys. Because um, we would never want to let down a sponsor. No, no. You're just, you're wicked. You're doing great stuff in the industry. And we're, I'm um, really, really, yeah, proud to have the support of of industry leaders like uh, all of you. What is what was your highlight of iMark, Trav? Um, oh, I'd talk about it, but it was a conversation with um, yeah, with with a money miner that I I just wasn't expecting to have. That was wonderful. Mine was meeting Bondi. Yeah, legend. Oh, did we mention Terra? We did. Yeah, we mentioned Terra. Yeah. We Bondi finally met DK. Bondi in yeah. person. Yeah, oh, I knew you met Langers in person. I did. Yeah, and the DK. Old... I hadn't met any of them. Oh, you yeah, hadn't met him in person. I'd met Langers no. and DK already, but meeting Bondi. Love you, Jeremy Bond. <laughs> Too easy. Thanks, money miners. Who to root? Could be back in the desk trap. I pumped. Love it. Right. Up. Cheers. It'll be five days of news this week, probably <laughs> money miners. <laughs> Don't complain on YouTube. <laughs> The information contained in this episode of Money of Mine is of general nature only and does not take into account the objectives, financial situation or needs of any particular person. Before making any investment decision, you should consult with your financial advisor and consider how appropriate the advice is to your objectives, financial situation and needs.